Hey, Monique, we don't have a quorum. Right. Okay. We got a plan. Okay. So uh, we hope to have a quorum very soon. We have uh, someone running late and um, someone that's supposed to be here. So um, since we can't um, take any votes, we're going to move to special presentations first um, because it does not require a vote. Um, so the first one, um, we're going to move to Ms. Katie Petrol, uh, Education Director of Parthenon. Is she here? Yes. Oh, Parthenon's back in the corner. There you go. Yes. I didn't see you back there. Okay. So um, would you like Wesley to come yes. up and introduce her? Okay, great. I um, am delighted to introduce to you Katie Petroli, who is the new Director of Education at the Parthenon. Um, she came to us after completing four years as the Steinmetz Family Foundation Museum Fellow at Corinth Excavations in ancient Corinth, Greece. There, her role involved managing a collection of over 300,000 artifacts and records in order to discover and share the stories of people who lived in Corinth, Greece for thousands of years. She produced K through 12 lesson plans and digital distance learning programs for an active archaeological excavation, pioneering, a, a pioneering <laughs> endeavor which enabled students from around the world to share in the rich cultural and natural heritage of ancient Greece. Her initiatives there connected Corinth excavations with over 5,000 students in 42 countries. The five years previous to that, Katie led archaeology and paleontology programming at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, which is the largest children's museum in the world. Over 1.2 million annual visitors experienced the educational program she developed while managing a diverse team of over 42 staff and volunteers. We don't have that many at the Parthenon. <laughs> she has completed numerous independent projects and internships from evaluating innovative art installations to cleaning and inventorying 3,500 marble sculptures at the Agora excavations in Athens, Greece. In total, Katie spent six summers excavating and supervising museum projects at the Agora excavations. Recently, she was awarded the J.M. Kaplan Fund Scholarship for Executive Leadership Development in, in Exhibit Development, Natural and Cultural Heritage Interpretation, and Strategic Planning. She's been named the Skype Global Learning Expert and Certified Microsoft Innovative Educator, and has been recognized with four other awards from Microsoft Educator Community, including the Microsoft Educator Community Influencer Award. A lot of words. She is a certified interpretive guide with Interpret Europe, holds a BA in Classical Humanities from Miami University and an MA in Museum Studies from Indiana University in Indianapolis, and we are so glad that she is part of our staff now. <laughs> Wish you know, I was going to introduce her, but I couldn't read that. Yeah, well, that would have. Uh, <laughs> fast. fast. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. What, what Welcome aboard. Lure, how did you lure her from Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have that. And I did. It's the Parthenon. It's there. Yeah. Is okay. that, that yellow coat that you have on? Um, now we'll move to Ms. Helen um, Sewers, uh, Sewers, Sewers. Uh, technical, technical speci specialist with the Greenways Division. I am very happy to uh, introduce you to Helen Sievers. Uh, she will be the new Greenways and Trails Project Manager for the Greenways Division. Uh, Helen is a registered landscape architect and a lead certified professional. She uh, is a Vanderbilt graduate and a University of Illinois graduate, so she's a hometown, hometown girl. Um, Helen was recently the project director for the Cave County Trails uh, System, overseeing a master plan for a 1,500 mile trail network that focused on Mammoth Cave. She was also the executive director of the Friends of Mammoth Cave National Park. And prior to that, she was the campus landscape architect for the University of uh, Western Kentucky, or Western Kentucky University, I should say. Um, and we are, she's already just jumped right in and uh, started working on projects, so just couldn't be happier. Welcome. Welcome on board. In the last special presentation, uh, the Friends of Two Rivers Mansion annual update. Thank you, uh, 
Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, I think <laughs> each one of you have a copy of the update. Um, if you do, you'll follow along with me. It's always uh, good to be able to come and to tell you what's going on at Two Rivers. And uh, that was, uh, okay. I'll introduce uh, Mary Hart. She's our uh, president for this year, president of the board. And so uh, I'm here on behalf of the board to, uh, to give you this update. Um, and uh, on the first page there, uh, we'll just uh, talk just uh, briefly about our uh, event visitation at the mansion. Uh, for comparison's sake, uh, in 2017, uh, there were an estimated just over 10,000 people who came to Two Rivers uh, to uh, one or the other events that we hosted, about uh, 10,200. Uh, Last year, uh, our numbers increased by over 700 persons. Uh, we had a total of uh, 10, right at 11,000 people who came to our property. And if you add in all of those people who came to the Hip Donaldson Farmers Market, which took place on the property uh, each Friday afternoon during the, uh, the spring, uh, summer, and fall months, our numbers uh, topped out at uh, uh, about 12.5 for the year on property. So that's about uh, 1,900 people over the uh, 2017 number. Uh, in addition to the market, uh, there were 22 weddings this past year, 11 different organizational meetings, uh, two concerts, an antique show, Easter egg hunt, a quilt display, two Nashville history lectures. Uh, we did over 100 tours of the mansion in the 1802 house last summer. Uh, the Travel Channel TV broadcast uh, for uh, Halloween. Uh, we had uh, Phil Ponder did a talk and demonstration of how he does his uh, Nashville uh, art prints, uh, a couple of large photo shoots, and uh, we had our largest crowd to date at Halloween at the mansion. We had uh, over 4,000 people on property, so we're gonna have to rethink how we're gonna do that uh, this coming year. It, uh, it was almost beyond our capability to, uh, to manage it. Um, in addition to all of these events, uh, we've added one additional bedroom that's been furnished out now with a teaster, 12-foot teaster bed that's on permanent loan from uh, the, uh, the uh, um, 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 well, I've forgotten the family's name now. But anyway, this bed was purchased uh, out of the mansion uh, in the 1930s. Spence McGavick sold it, and uh, it's been in this family's, uh, been in storage for the last 25, 30 years. And so it came back to us and uh, took uh, about two months to put it back together because it was in hundreds of pieces, and there were no instructions and no diagram. So. Uh, but it's a beautiful piece. If you have been to the mansion lately, I'd invite you to come and look at it. Uh, we have a number of items that have been donated back to us that were purchased in the 1966 estate sale. As people find out about it, uh, what we're doing and our uh, reputation grows, people are more than willing to uh, begin to uh, bring things back and say this is where this belongs. Uh, carpeting has been replaced in both stairwells and a current project's underway to replace all the drapery in the mansion. So we're doing all that we can to uh, uh, preserve the mansion and to uh, restore it. Uh, calendar of events, which is on your uh, agenda to approve, uh, you'll notice that uh, with the exception of January and November, uh, we have something that is scheduled at the uh, mansion each month of the year. Our financials for 2018, uh, uh, was set at uh, 73688 and we did have a projected shortfall uh, this past year of uh, $2,800. Because of a one-time expense, we paid for an archaeological evaluation of the event center site in the woods behind the mansion. And uh, so early in the year, this budget was revised downward due to the cancellation of the uh, evening of elegance that we were planning to have last uh, April. There were some uh, number of issues that kind of converged in a perfect storm that made it uh, advisable to cancel that event last year. But the good news is that uh, we finished the year in the black and came in with $2,087 profit uh, for our uh, year. The evening of elegance is uh, back on for this year, April, uh, and due to some additional planning time and thanks to some significant in-kind contributions that we've been able to arrange for. We're projecting a minimum of $11,000 profit coming in off of that fundraising event the last Friday in April. Uh, the 2019 budget is set at 61575 
and there's a copy of that uh, in the next couple of pages. You'll note that, uh, again, we are paying for half of Ms. Carrillo's salary and also funding two docents for the summer and for the holiday tours. And the budget also includes uh, $4,000 that goes into escrow. That's a growing account. Uh, we're planning toward having to uh, <clears throat> fund a repainting of the mansion within the next uh, somewhere between two to four years, uh, depending on weather conditions and, and wear. So if you have any uh, questions about the budget at this point, I'd be glad to, uh, to answer those or try to. As usual, it always it looks good. <laughs> They'll do a great job. Uh, <clears throat> the last couple of pages have to do with the master plan. Uh, we're halfway through now the uh, first five-year phase of that 20-year master plan that we completed uh, in 2016. Uh, a copy of the phase one uh, five-year plan is uh, attached uh, there with your packet. And the items that are highlighted in yellow have been accomplished since the plan was adopted. Uh, the friends group this year will focus on the interpretation portion of the plan, those things that are not in highlight. And uh, <clears throat> the friends board encourages parks to focus on three items uh, during the year, including the construction phase of the event center. Uh, we have the, uh, the plan in place, uh, so all we need now is the money to, uh, to put the building up. Uh, the completion of that center will enable us to have a broader range of activities on the property. It will also decrease the strain on the mansion and it will open the door for us to uh, build a mansion into a true house museum that we can use for uh, educational and tourism purposes. Uh, second, addressing the HVAC needs. Uh, in addition to relocating the units that are on the second floor of the mansion down to the ground, a priority, I think, should be the replacement of the basement system, which is several years old, poorly vented, and uh, if we have bad weather in the winter with lots of winds, that, uh, that pilot light is frequently out. Uh, and number three, uh, funding of a full-time employee at the mansion. Based on the level of activity that uh, you have seen here in the first couple of pages, the number of visitors that are attending events at the mansion, uh, we're at a point where a part-time employee is just not sufficient. Um, the Friends Board uh, members, uh, we volunteer a lot of hours, but uh, we cannot and uh, we should not be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of a city-owned property. So we would uh, seriously con uh, ask you to consider uh, in the coming budget year uh, a full-time uh, employee dedicated to the mansion to help us uh, to be able to move forward. We're basically at a standstill point now. We've plateaued and uh, we need that in, in order to be able to move to the next phase. So if you have any questions. Thank that, you so much. Thank you very much. All right, now we have a quorum. We will proceed, we will go back to the beginning of our um, agenda. Uh, I will read the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry a final decision by the board any person or other entity considering an appeal should <coughs> consult with an attorney to ensure that that time and procedural requirements are met i will move to the consideration of minutes assuming everyone's read that i will and are, are so there not any changes uh, second uh, any discussion all those in favor Aye. opposed the minutes carry metro council referrals today i don't think no, we do um, old business, there is none today. We'll move to the consent agenda. Um, I will entertain a motion for the entire consent agenda, unless there any, uh, there's a motion. Second. There's a second, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, the consent agenda is passed. We're moving to new business. <coughs> Uh, a new business 021906 the Cumberland River compact on behalf of Route Nashville requests the board to accept 1,000 trees valued at $200,000 to be planted at Ravenwood Park 
So this is a proposed partnership between Metro Parks and the Cumberland River Compact uh, to plant those 1,000 trees, uh, 1, trees um, consistent with the Ravenwood Master Plan that was completed a, a year or two ago. So although there, there are reforestation uh, areas in multiple locations in the park, but uh, these thousand trees would be focused uh, on the old Ravenwood golf course portion of the site and begin to create a visual buffer between the adjacent houses and the interior of the park. And Mikhail Houghton is here, executive director of the compact. If I don't know if you want to speak or if any of the board members have any questions. Uh, this is part of a campaign that's a partnership with the city, the Cumberland River Compact, um, Metro Water, to plant 500,000 trees um, by 2050 to restore the city's urban canopy for healthy water, healthy Nashvillians, healthy air. Um, and uh, we're excited to partner with parks on this project. It's a beautiful park, and we were out there um, Friday morning to look at um, the planting areas that, as Tim said, conform with the master plan. Um, the planting uh, list was provided by the, the landscape architects who did the master plan. Um, we'll have, uh, we hope to have a volunteer day followed by a professional planting so that it will um, draw attention to the park, get community involvement, um, and then get the trees in the ground. When would this take place? Um, we have a tentative date of March 11th. Oh. Um, so we're, we're trying to squeeze it in within the planting season. The uh, city has a goal of planting 5,000 trees for this campaign by Earth Day. So that um, has given us some extra um, um, incentive to get this done. Any questions? A motion? I have a motion and a second. By any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. All right. Uh, moving to 021907. Uh, Mr. Scott Tiger representing the Miracle Field of Music City request board approval of the following naming rights request. The MLMC requests permission for the naming rights to the complex of the Miracle Field of Music City to be named the Miles for Miles Foundation the Miracle Field Complex of Music City. The complex consists of the playing field area, the concession stand area, fan area, bathrooms, and the playground. The Miles for Miles Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3 located here in, in the Middle Tennessee area and helps in funding programs for Down syndrome families. In exchange for the naming rights to MLMC Complex, the Miles for Miles Foundation has pledged $350,000 to the MLMC and is ready to write a check ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you were doing this on purpose, didn't we? A lot of, uh, of M's, aren't you? Yeah, they? yeah, and then you've got another, another one here. Uh, the MLMC requests permission for the naming rights uh, to the Miracle Field itself to be named the More Than Me Foundation Miracle Field of Music City Field. <laughs> the field consists of uh, the Miracle Field itself. The More Than Me Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit it consists of MLB players, some of which are ex-Vanderbilt baseball players whose mission is to reach out and donate <laughs> funds and volunteers to community efforts such as the MLMC. In exchange for the naming rights to the MLMC field, the More Than Me Foundation has pledged $250,000 to the MLMC. Their fundraising for the $250,000 is ongoing. And we have Mr. Tigard here. Yes, sir. Who's leading the charge. Thanks for um, having me. <clears throat> would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I sent Janet up an addendum to all that MLMC, uh, MM, da 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 da, <laughs> to the naming of the complex to be the Miles for Miles Miracle Field Complex. We're shortening that down considerably for music city and all that stuff. But uh, just the addendum is the Miles for Miles Miracle Field Complex. And it'll be an archway entering the field all we're trying to do is add the Miles for Miles logo or the name 
uh, for their $350,000 uh, contribution to the complex. And the more than me is ongoing uh, for the naming rights in the field, so we'll keep you abreast of that. Uh, so we've raised about, just to give you a quick update, uh, $750,000 with these pledges, uh, maybe closer to 800000 It's got another pledge today of the $1 million we're supposed to have in our checkbook to break ground. Our goal is to break ground in, in August of this year and then raise the extra money for the playground, but uh, hopefully we'll have a million dollars by August. But uh, the big step is the miles for miles uh, addition to the name uh, as we enter the complex. And I appreciate your thoughts and considerations and approval uh, for that change. So I think this is gonna have to be deferred really to two committees which can meet jointly, and that would be the naming and signage committee. So that would be at the next meeting. Understand. So. Thank you for your right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say one thing. I, I some time ago went down and David Price, who everybody remembers who played Vanderbilt also, when he was from Murfreesboro. And he basically almost singly put up the dollars to build that town in Murfreesboro. And if you hadn't seen the Field of Dreams, if you're around Murfreesboro, go and see it sometime. It will absolutely blow you away. And I think we need to have the same thing. Here. Nashville needs a miracle field and, here. And you've got some more here. ball players. I just saw where Sonny Gray, who also was at Vanderbilt, is going to be at Cincinnati next year. And these young men, I think they're taught to give back, and I give Coach Corbin at Vanderbilt a real applauding for that. Right. And, and he is the one that steers them into giving back to the community. And I think you'll see some of these other ball players step up to the plate for Nashville. Cool. Maggie Corbin's on our board, so we're, we're right in there with uh, Coach Corbin and his group, but uh, thank that, you. That's smart. This is a, the, the 350000 is, is a big step towards the, the fundraising, so we hope for approval of this, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Uh, moving on to 0219. Do we have to make the, do we have a motion on? Well, it's deferred. Defer, yeah, defer to signage and naming. Name. Okay, do we have to make a motion? We don't no. think so. Okay. That's, yeah. um, 021908, staff request board approval to accept donations of gymnastics equipment and funds valued at $6,924 from VP Tumble Track, American Gymnasts, Flit Fest, Gymnastics Camp, USAG Gymnastics Tennessee, and Elite Athletics Sports Entertainment to establish a youth gymnastics program at Madison Recreation Center. Steve. Yes, uh, Ms. Rachel Walsh, I'm along with the supervisor, Mr. Peter Gregory, and Mr. Marielle Haynes. Ms. Rachel has vast experience in gymnastics. She's establishing a tumbling program. Um, and with the support of her supervisor, she's allowing soft funds and donations to establish this program, and we're excited to have this offering in our program. Great, wonderful. And staff um, recommends approval? Yes, I move that. We have a motion for approval. Second. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Right. The motion carries. Uh, 021909 staff request board approval to accept a donation of 25 trees valued at $1,500 from the Cumberland River Compact as part of the Route Nashville program to be planted along the 440 Greenway. Sandy. So I've got a little update to that. We uh, the Compact reached out and said they were able to get some larger trees, so the value of those will actually be 3500 And we expect those to be installed in the spring. Is that on the new 440 Greenway? It is. Where are they going to be? They're scattered along the Greenway. Um, the project engineer also did the planting plan locations for these trees. So, okay. so we'll amend the uh, dollar amount to $3,500. Um, uh, staff recommends approval. I make a motion to approve the motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. The motion carries. Moving to 021910, staff requests board approval to apply and ultimately accept a license agreement with the Tennessee Department of Transportation to utilize an estimated 2.07 acres of TDOT surplus property located along the east bank of the Cumberland River between 1 Gaylord Drive and 02 Rivers Court for the purpose of constructing a multi-use greenway trail from the Cumberland River pedestrian bridge to the Opryland Mills complex. 
Cindy, do you want to comment on it? I would have to go we'll defer this. I right, so we're asking that to be deferred to the acquisition committee, but this is a section um, of property where we need to route the trail, and we don't currently have a license agreement with TDOT on that. They know that, that we're going to be okay. asking for that. So we'll defer that to the next committee meetings and bring it back to the board. Um, 021911, staff request board park board approval to accept one temporary construction access agreement and two permanent greenway con conservation easements from Ryman Hospitality Group and one temporary construction access agreement from the Simon Group Inc. on property located along the east bank of the Cameron River between one Gaylord Drive and zero two Rivers Court for the purpose of constructing a multi-use greenway trail from the Cumberland River pedestrian bridge to the Opry Mills complex. So same project, uh, we're asking that to be deferred to acquisition committee. Um, we need a little bit more space to build a couple of bridges and just to get construction vehicles into the area. That'll be deferred as well. All right, that's the end of new business. Uh, we'll move to capital projects update. Uh, I'll just hit the highlights. Uh, Centennial Park Phase 2, we've been in contract negotiations with Rock City on that, and I hope that the purchasing department will be circulating a contract on that very soon, and we can uh, start putting up construction fence and break ground. When, when ideally would that happen? Like uh, March. Is, okay. I, I hate to be more specific than that, just because that, we got so little control months, over but, yeah, right. the next month or two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And an approximately 12 months of construction timeline. Uh, in Percy Warner Park, the Page Road lot construction is wrapping up. And uh, if the weather cooperates, we hope to be able to open that to the public uh, this month. In Tony Rose Park, as you recall, this is. Uh, uh, you all approved an agreement with Panatoni Construction for some improvements to that park. Um, the agreement with them was that that work would be completed by the end of 2018 and primarily because of uh, weather. Uh, they have not completed that work yet. It's either been too wet or too cold, notwithstanding days like today. Now that the weather's good though, they're back on site and we're hoping to be able to wrap all that up. So they should be able to get off site very soon with the exception of the, um, the uh, mural that's going to be painted in the cul-de-sac, uh, which is a partnership with Oasis Center. So that will happen later in the spring. Um, Wharf Park, the evaluation committee uh, uh, evaluated all of those proposals and came up with a short list of three, and that list will be making its way to the mayor's office for a selection there. All right, any, any questions for Tim? Um, Jackie, any up, upcoming special events and activities? Yeah, we've got a couple of things, actually. So the weather may be cold, but there's still a lot going on in Metro Parks. And so if you want to celebrate Valentine's Day, we have our annual Senior Valentine Ball. It's called A Night to Remember. Uh, it's legendary. It's a legendary. <laughs> it's a legendary event, and we always have seniors and seniors for the viewing public or those people over 50 uh, who come to this event. Uh, so it's a good way to get your electric slide on. Dinner is served. Uh, the Tyrone Smith Review uh, will be playing, and that is this Saturday, starting at 6 p.m. Also this Saturday at 5 p.m., the Centennial Art Center's gallery opening for a new exhibit which explores the worlds of calligraphy, canvas, and clay is also scheduled. So uh, that's a good event, and that uh, particular exhibit will be on display, I think, until the end of February. Jackie, is that, this is Friday night, right? Not Saturday. Friday. Valentine. Yeah, you right. said Saturday, so it's, just for the record, it's Friday night. Right. It yeah. is uh, Friday, February 8th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the Centennial. Everything and the Centennial okay. Art Gallery opening is also on okay. Friday, February 8th. And then the last thing is on February 23rd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. we have uh, a health fair that is scheduled at Southeast Community Center and they're expecting a very large turnout for that event. All right, thank you for that. Um, now moving to department updates. Do we have any department updates today, Jim? 
I just wanted to acknowledge the departure of one of the Warner family, um, and actually I have to acknowledge he has left the building. <laughs> 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 but Mark Weller, who's been the director, is moving on, and uh, we would not have the facilities or the land or the programming that we have in Warner Park without the friends of Warner Park. And Mark has been a really big part of that for the last few years, and he is moving on to do something different. Not greener pastures, I'm sure he can't be greener than Warner, but he'll be going on to do something else. And I just wanted to acknowledge him, I guess for the record, that, uh, <laughs> that we will miss him and get in good Godspeed. Thank you. Before we move to the report of director, I wanted to um, announce a, a committee that's been formed, and you'll see more about this, and we'll have a presentation here soon. Um, but um, with strong backing from the mayor, uh, there's a new Fort Negley Advisory Committee that will help uh, kind of guide and listen to public input and give input and, and provide advocacy for Fort Negley. Um, uh, and I wanted to let everyone know who's on that committee. Um, Kix Brooks, who I'm sure many of you know, is chairing it. He's very passionate about this and has taken, taken this on and uh, he's, he helped originally with Fort Negley a long time ago and this is a, a great passion of his so Kix has been great to work with and just trying to get this kicked off. Other committee members Clay Bailey um, and these are in alphabetical order. Uh, Mayor, the Mayor David Riley, Catherine Brown, Chris Cotton, Marty Dickens, uh, Dr. Vince Durnham, uh, Senator Bill Frist, Eddie George, Carl Haley, Robert Hicks, Kent Kirby, Dr. Revis Mitchell, Monique Odom, uh, Ann Roberts, Ron Samuels, Joy Searcy, John Sigenthaler, Tim Walker, Dr. Carol Van West, and myself. Um, we had one um, kind of uh, introduction meeting and just organizational meeting uh, to get it kicked off. Uh, it's very exciting. Everyone's very passionate about it. So, and the, everyone realized it's going to be a long-term project. We'll have, a, again, a presentation here in a month or two. We kind of talk about a timeline and a realistic timeline. But it is a huge project with, you know, you know, long-lasting implications in that for the city. So everyone's excited about it. So we'll keep everyone posted. Um, report of the director. Okay. Um, well, we are winding up our uh, FY20 budget submission. I think it's due tomorrow. So we are working diligently to um, get all of our budget requests uh, prioritized um, and try to stay in line with instructions that we have been given from the finance director. And once I have those um, and they've been <coughs> submitted, I will share those with the board. I um, want to thank uh, our community center staff, our maintenance staff, park police, and all other departments who um, have been supportive um, in helping us to uh, make available the last resort warming shelters, um, the cold weather shelters. Uh, we initially thought that we would have about 75 people or uh, need to provide 75 beds. I have uh, recently been updated that we um, have exceeded that by quite a bit. Um, and so we're working with uh, social services to make sure that uh, all of those who are in need of shelter when the weather is extremely cold are aware of um, other shelters in the city that, that have um, placements for them before we move to these. But thank you to all the staff and departments and organizations who support this effort. Um, and then finally, we are very close or, or have completed um, getting a con contract for the deconstruction of Grish Stadium. Uh, the contract uh, for that project should be circulated uh, through the approval process very soon, so in the next couple of days. So. We're excited about that. Then after that, they can start? After that, they can start. Um, <laughs> Fort Negley Committee will be happy to hear that. Yeah. So. Thank you. All right. Any other announcements? Any, any other items? Motion for adjournment? So This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.